Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and welcome back. So, continuing the topic from the previous video, I did not compile it in the previous video because it was getting longer and then it gets boring, of course. So, we talked about the load line, we talked about the DC biasing of a PJT, we considered an NPN transistor with a common emitter configuration. We draw the output characteristics, we draw the load line, we have a Q point. We have the operating point. Now, in this video, we see the Q point stability. The how much is the Q point stable? So, let me give the heading first and then we'll come. So, Q point stability. Now, the thing is that once, once you set, once you set the operating point, once you set the Q point of your system, it should not fluctuate, which means what? It should not change if if there are a certain change in the conditions and what are those conditions so those may be the environmental conditions or some other circuit parameters which we see right now so the basic motive is what that the the operating point should not change it should remain fixed and how do we do that so we see it right now the Q point, it, and it is nothing, you know, this is just a values, the set of values of what? At the, at the horizontal in the x-axis you have VCE, and let's say Q for the, uh, for the Q coordinates, and you have IC for the Q coordinates for the, for, for the Y axis, the, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So just a simple values of voltage and current, right? So this should not change, and this changes with what? With the temperature, number one. Number one is that if the temperature increases, if the temperature increases, what happens? The reverse leakage current increases. The main thing, the main thing that happens is that ICO increases. This is what, this is the reverse leakage current. And if this increases, this means that IC is equal, IC will increase, IC will increase, why? If ICO increases, so IC has to increase. Why? Because IC is equal to beta times IB plus a very big factor of beta plus 1 times ICBO. So if the reverse leakage current is increasing, the collector current will increase. And if the collector current is increasing, VCE would decrease. VCE would decrease. And why would we see a decrease? Because you have the relation for this that VCE is equal to VCC minus IC RC. So have a look, IC is increasing, so you are subtracting an increased value. So this would increase in a reduction of VCE. So this is the first effect. And this what would happen? The Q point would move towards saturation. To move toward the left, I have already drawn the figure in the previous video. This implies what? That Q point will move towards saturation. And of course you can expect it. Voltage is reducing, the current is increasing, the Q point is coming to the left. To the left is what? It's the saturation region. So the Q point is moving towards the saturation region. The second thing that happens, the second thing that happens is that if the temperature is increased, the VBE will reduce. VBE is what? It's the barrier potential. It's the barrier potential of the forward bias diode. A forward bias PN junction. VBE would reduce with the increase in temperature. How is that? How is that? So let me tell you that VBE, VBE is what? It's KT upon eta times ln, uh, no, no, KT upon E. KT upon E, ln of Na, nd upon ni whole squared so i have a look from over here you would say that this temperature is directly proportional so if temperature is increasing vbe should increase but the thing is that the ni squared ni squared is directly proportional ni squared is directly proportional to t to the power cube so have a look this thing ni squared this is 
uh, this is more dominant than the linear term temperature directly right so which means that if n i squared so if the temperature has increased the barrier potential would decrease this n i squared has a greater because t to the power cube and this is t to the power one so t to the power cube is dominant right yes so from the KVL in the input equation you also have that i b is equal to uh, v b e I B you you write you wrote it over here, uh, over there like this V B B minus V B E upon R B. So if V B E has reduced, won't they say that I B would increase? The base current would increase. The base current would increase. This is the second term. And if the base current has increased, so have a look again. I C is beta times I B. So this means that the collector current I C would also increase. And again, have a look. If I C has increased, so this means that V C E would reduce. V C E would reduce. So this is what this is again the temperature effect on the base collect and the collector current and over here again what again the effect is the same the collector current has increased we see has reduced q point moves towards saturation q point moves towards saturation is that fine it is yes the temperature coefficient of vbe the temperature coefficient of VBE, let me just try it over here. The temperature coefficient of VBE, this is what dVBE with respect to dT, this is equal to minus 2.6 millivolts per degree centigrade temperature this means what that for every one degree rise in temperature the barrier potential vbe reduces by a 2.6 millivolts write it down for yourself for each one degree rise in one degree centigrade rise in temperature the barrier potential of the forward p n junction diode vbe will reduce by how much amount by 2.6 millivolts is that fine it is it is third third you could say what if the temperature increases if temperature increases the value of beta increases beta value increases and by beta value increase what do i mean this why is this or how is this because the recombination has reduced this is because the recombination has reduced recombination has reduced recombination has reduced why is that so you know it very well the majority carriers they would just directly pass into the the from the emitter to the collector right without recombining into the base the minority carriers you know this this one right so the recombination has reduced so if beta increases this means what that i c will increase i c will increase why because beta is ic upon ib so if beta increases which means you could say that ic has increased yes yes so again again what happens is again if ic has increased so vce will reduce and if vce has reduced so again the q point is moving towards the saturation region again it is moving toward the saturation region for instance let's say we draw a graph let's say this is my vce this is my ic and this is let's say the 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 ib level the original point is this one this is your original q point 
for having a value ECE, having a value IC. Q, Q. What do you do? You decrease the value by increasing the temperature effect. Okay, this is only the temperature effect. So you have decreased the value of VCE. Let's say I write it as an arrow like this. So decreasing the value of VCE would increase the value of current. So I would say ICQ increase. Have a look. The Q point has shifted towards the left. Toward the left is what? Toward the left is the saturation. Toward the left is the saturation region. Similarly, you can have the exact opposite discussion. The Q point would move toward the right. We'll say it is moving towards the cutoff region. It's moving toward the cutoff region. Our objective, our thing, our goal is to keep this Q point in the active region. Why? Because we want to operate our BJT as an amplifier in this course. Whenever we want it as a switch, most probably in the power electronics courses we study that. So over there we will see with whatever happens in the cutoff and the saturation region. For now, we want to keep it as simple as it is and confined to what? To the active region of operation. Is that fine? Is that fine? So, what we need to do? We need to design a circuit. We need to design a circuit where the Q point is stable. We need to design a circuit where the Q point is stable and it does not change with the change in temperature. We need to design a circuit, write it down for yourself. We need to design a circuit where the Q point is stable and it is not changing with respect to the temperatures. It is not changing with respect to the temperatures. So basically, I see the change in I C is what? The change in I C is what? It is either due to V B E, you know. Or it is due to plus O. I C B O. The reverse leakage current. The equations are all written over here. Or it is due to the beta term. Due to beta term. Right? Beta for a specific transistor is fixed, right? The change of beta would mean the change of the change of transistor anyways so if I write it in another term in another term let's say I write it with respect to in the derivative form which I am very weak in derivative partial derivative of IC with respect to ICBO. Into the change of ICBO. This is one change. I see changing with respect to one parameter. The second would be what? The partial of change of IC with respect to VBE. VBE plus the final that is due to the beta value now what do we have or if i have written over here this thing if i have written the delta sign if i have written the derivative so in that i do not need to include this 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 delta change so again this is again the change right so, yes so while, while considering the change with respect to one, the change with respect to the other two would be constants. 
as over here I'm considering the change of IC with respect to ICBO so over here I would consider VBE and beta value constant over here I'm considering the change of IC with respect to VBE so ICBO and beta would be constant similarly with respect to beta so VBE and ICBO would be constant right now we, we write it in terms of a sensitivity factor we say that change of IC change of IC is S times ICBO S times the change of ICBO plus S dash the derivative S dash times the change of VBE and plus S double dash times the change of beta this S is what this is the sensitivity this S is the sensitivity of the device the more the S, the more is the device sensitive to the changes with respect to which it is. Right? Yes. S is maximum. S is maximum out of these three. Out of S dash, S double dash, S is maximum. Which means what? That the change of collector current is most affected by the change of the reverse leakage current right so I will write over here is that s is maximum that is change of IC is most affected by change of the reverse leakage current now I've not got into the detail of this because this is not the scope of this book not the scope of this course this is an introductory level a third fourth semester course right so that is why we've not gone into that detail of it so s is maximum so which means that this the change of the current would be most affected by the change of the reverse leakage current so we will only consider this factor for now we will only consider this factor for now and this s is known as the stability factor this S is known as the stability factor or the sensitivity or stability factor whatever it is so for the common emitter configuration we have discussing till now is the common emitter configuration right so in that what do we have is that IC is beta times IB plus beta plus 1 times ICBO right yes so if you have the value of S as DIC, DICBO, S is what? It's this thing, right? Yes. So this is DIC. So you differentiate this IC with respect to ICBO and apply the chain rule. So I cannot do this, okay. I will just copy paste it because I am very weak in this derivative and integrations. So this IC with respect to ICBO would come out to be what? Beta DIB DIC into DIC DICBO plus a plus beta plus 1 right yes now what do you have is so i would just write it from here directly okay i have like this that s is equal to no not s is equal to s into 1 minus beta times dib dic do this uh, the simplification for yourself is 1 plus beta or beta plus 1 or whatever it is so s comes out to be finally what 1 plus beta over 1 minus beta times DIB DIC now DIB DIC is 0 why is that because the base current is constant you saw it from the previous video uh, or I have it over here have a look VBB is constant VBE is constant RB is constant so IB is constant so which means that DIB DIC is 0 so S comes out to be what S comes out to be beta plus 1 this is the sensitivity of this device or the stability factor and this is a very high value 
this is a very high value which means what that this is the most unstable configuration I told you the higher this con uh, this stability uh, factor this means what that the more it is a a a affected by the external conditions so this means what that this is an unstable configuration right yes so what do we have we have stabilization techniques we have stabilization techniques if this is unstable so we can make it stable so for that what do we have we have stabilization techniques stabilization so the first method is what it's biasing the first method is biasing yes and how do we do that so we have a fixed bias circuit we have in this we have fixed biasing we have self or voltage divider biasing we have the third is the third is what it's a collector to base biasing or whatever a number of biasing configurations collector to base biasing we have a number of biasing configurations we'll see and we will see over there that in the different configurations the value of s would be different and we will try to achieve a lesser value of s we'll try to achieve a lesser value of s right yes so this is the first stabilization technique the other is compensation compensation is not included in our course the other is compensation techniques you should just remember the names again in this we have what we have diode compensation diode compensation we have thermistor and transistor configuration thermistor and transistor and the third is transistor compensation so this is not included in our course the biasing is included the biasing is included which we will start from the next video we will start from the next video just let me see if i have any point in the book what do we have the stability of a system is a measure of its sensitivity to variations in the parameters beta increases with temperature vbe decreases about 2.5 millivolt per degree celsius increase in temperature ico the reverse saturation current doubles for every 10 degrees rise in temperature any of these factors can cause the bias point to drift and we already have seen this change of the q point right ib is quite sensitive to the level of vbe so we've seen this we've seen this okay so anyways networks that are quite stable and relatively insensitive to temperature variations have low stability factors the higher the stability factor the more sensitive is the network to the parameters right yes so which means we have to if we have to make the system stable we have to make this s value smaller and we'll see that in the next videos how to do that so we'll see the biasing techniques for that the compensation is not included in our course in the next video i will see you with the first configuration that is the fixed bias configuration till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye